Hello my friends, I'm Brian. Once again, thank you for clicking on to the video. DPS or tank? Which one is the best build? That is the topic of today's video, where I will try out two different Boat River Astalos build that is a total 180 of each other. Let's go! As mentioned earlier, the main focus of the day is Boat River Astalos. It is the best monster for critical oriented DPS build. Well, actually, the best monster for this kind of build should be Kirin. But then again, Kirin is not the trending topic right now, so yeah, please bear with me. Anyway, the Boat River Astalos have perfect balance of HP, attack, and critical rate. So in terms of damage, it can definitely be on par with Rajang on the damage numbers. But beside the monster, there are actually two very interesting skills that I would like to highlight today. Looking at the list of Thunder Jeans, you can clearly see two very contradicting skills. They are the Vengeful Thunder and Bolt Eater. On one end, Vengeful Thunder favor low HP. At its full power, which is below 33% health, you get a whooping 50% extra power on the attack. Then on the other side of the spectrum, we have Bolt Eater, which recovers health based on the damage dealt to the enemy. At max level, it offers 20% health regen. In short, that's a lot of health. Basically, your Boat River will never die when this skill is available. So, let's make a build around these two skills and test them out in the wild. Okay, let's start with the Vengeful Thunder build first since it is pretty straightforward and easy to understand. As usual, when talking about max DPS, we need the 4 Horsemen of Apocalypse. These skills are perfect to pair with the Vengeful Thunder skill. For the remaining active skill, Plasma Pressure and Thunder Fist are chosen for their ability to crit. Remember, only close range skills can crit. Finally, we add on the Thunder Plus XL and Rainbow Gene to complete the bingo. But actually, the bingo bonus is not very important in this build. The damage output is so freaking high, the tiny buff doesn't matter anymore. So just place it anywhere you like. Just go with your feeling. Just Chin Chai place it. Yeah, that's what we say in Malaysia. Chin Chai. Now, for testing out the build, let's drop by Special Elder's Lair and say hi to Grimclaw Tigrex. His moveset is so linear, I always use it to test Thunder Monster. So as expected, the damage number is crazy. Next up, let's make an unkillable Boat River Astalos based around the Boat Eater skill. You will need the Blood Suck Gene from Kizu. Afterward, let's find something that can benefit from full HP. So, I've picked the Dancer XL genes since the monster will be at full health most of the time. The speed boost from the skill will make it as fast as Kirin in terms of speed. So basically, it will always move first. This is perfect for applying status effect to the enemy. Then, in the line of keeping monster at full health, double attack is always preferred over head to head. So the best passive skill for this case is none other than Synchronized XL. Next for the damage buff, I pick Critical XL to leverage Boat River's natural high critical rate. Then of course, Thunder Boost XL is a must. And then, Azure Voltage was chosen over Palm Up for the Bengal bonus. For the remaining active skills, Thunder Fist is still preferable for the damage and status effects. And also, definitely the ability to crit. For the power type skill, I will put Buckshot XL instead of Onslaught. Plasma Pressure might have better damage due to the ability to crit, but it cannot inflict paralysis. So for this case, taking advantage of the speed buff from Dancer and using Thunderbug Bliss and Thunder Fist to cause paralysis seems more feasible compared to solely relying on DPS. Finally, Putting all the things together, and you will get this bingo board. Now, for this build, you cannot Chinchai place the gene. You need all the damage buff you can get out of the bingo. Now, it's time to say hello to Grimclaw again. As you can see, basically this boat river is unkillable. At last, let's have a retrospective view on both of the builds. The Vengeful Thunder build is no doubt one of the highest damage builds in the game. But the downside is, it cannot achieve maximum potential in most of the scenarios. For example, I tried using this build and go against Sozie Mizuzune in the Heavenly Eye quest. 
it will just keep getting KO by the AOE skill and the NPC really like to heal it to max HP. So the utility of this build is quite narrow. For the vampire build, the damage is actually not bad. It's all rounded and balanced which is suitable for most situations no matter solo or co-op. However, it has some downside too. Since this build heavily relies on double attack to keep the monster at full health, it will really get messy when facing boss monsters that usually have two moves in one turn. So, you will need to time both hitter at the correct timing to refill the health to the max. Alright, that it is for this video. Have fun with this build and don't forget to click like and subscribe for more gaming guide and tips video. I will see you in the next video. This is Brian from Malaysia. Over and out.